Our collection begins with the beginning of cinema. The earliest film that we have in our collection comes from 1891. Uh, this is a camera test uh, that was uh, uh, produced by the Thomas Edison Company. The film was called Newark Athlete. It just shows a young man swinging some Indian clubs. It's only a few frames long. It was part of a series of experiments that Edison and his engineers uh, engaged in in the early 1890s. Where our collection really begins, though, is in 1893 with first films that were registered for copyright. It was in the fall of 1893 that Thomas Edison started registering films for copyright, but the earliest surviving registered film that we have came to the library in January of 1894 it was called an Edison kinetoscopic record of a sneeze. And colloquially, it's known as Fred Ott's sneeze. Very sh again, very short film, only a few frames long. It shows one of the Edison engineers, Fred Ott, who is known for his comical sneezes. So you see Fred put a little bit of snuff in his nose, and then he has a very violent sneeze. Now, this did not come to the library on film. There was no provision in the copyright law in 1894 to allow for celluloid film to be registered for copyright because really celluloid roll film just being in the process of being invented. So what Edison did is he exposed the negative for kinetoscopic record of a sneeze on strips of photographic contact paper, affixed them to a cardboard backing and sent it into the library to be registered as a photograph. Now, you have to think about this for a moment, because we do all the time. The paper print collection, as it came to be known, in that sense really was an historical accident. The name has been lost to the midst of time, but we're very grateful for whatever library bureaucrat decided that it would be okay to register this as a photograph. It's not one photograph, it's a series of photographs, but yet they allowed it to be registered. So once that happened, then the floodgates kind of opened. So Edison started registering more films on paper with the library, starting in 1894. And Edison was a very prolific film producer up until 1900, you know, that he produced nearly 800 films. So there, there started to be more and more films come in for copyright on paper. And then other producers started following along behind Edison, people like Sigmund Lubin in Philadelphia, the Biograph Company, which was actually started by Edison's former uh, uh, engineer, W.K.L. Dixon, uh, and then many, many others through the, you know, the first decade of the 20th century. And they, all of these people were registering their films with us as paper prints. And that continued up until 1912 when the copyright law was changed to allow for the submission of motion picture film. So now people were, were registering celluloid film, the type of film that we know today. But the library didn't have any storage really for the celluloid film. It was printed on nitrocellulose film stock, was, which was highly flammable. And so the library didn't keep any of the film that came registered as film. We didn't do that until the late 1940s when we acquired some storage that allowed us to keep nitrate film. But up until 1912, we have this glorious collection of uh, films on paper print, uh, roughly 3,300 titles, all of which are available to view. This, the paper prints are the crown jewel of our collection. They form the basis of everything that we have collected since then, and we have put more effort into the paper prints than any other single collection. We continue to work on them today. There's really no better 
insight, at least in terms of moving images, to what life was like at the beginning of the 20th century than the paper prints. There is practically no documentary that you will watch today that has moving images from the turn of the 20th century that do not reference the paper prints, that don't have some, something from the paper print collection in them. You cannot write a meaningful history of film without referring to the films in the paper print collection because it traces the evolution of cinema from a cinema of attractions and actualities through the development of the narrative form. It's a, such a wonderful resource to students, scholars of cinema.